Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So Teofimo Lopez is scheduled to fight against Jermaine Ortiz on February 8th, but recently, all of a sudden, he's been talking about Terrence Crawford. Now, first off, this is a little bit of an upgrade of an opponent because originally, Teo, he had his sights on fighting Jose Ramirez, and thank God Jose Ramirez turned down the fight, so we got a little bit of an upgrade. It will definitely be interesting to see how Teofimo can do against Jermaine Ortiz compared to Lomachenko fighting Ortiz. The Ortiz-Lomachenko fight was extremely competitive. A lot of people even thought that Ortiz won the fight, although I felt Lomachenko did a good job of finishing stronger. He kind of wore down Ortiz, but that's what Lomachenko often does. He usually starts off slow and finishes strong. Now, the only difference from Lomachenko and Teofimo fighting Ortiz is now Ortiz is going to have to move up and wait to fight Teofimo. So we'll see if that's going to affect his performance. But either way, this is a much better fight than Teofimo Lopez versus Jose Ramirez. Now, even though Teo is fighting Ortiz next, you would think that he's fighting against Terrence Crawford next. At least that's the way Teofimo tries to make it sound by constantly talking about nothing but Crawford. But the whole Terrence Crawford talk is nothing but a diversion to continue avoiding Devin Haney. Teo knew after Devin Haney moved up to 140 and had a very impressive win over read this pro gray there will be more pressure on him to fight Devin Haney we all know that Devin has been calling out Teofimo Lopez for years when Teo was fighting at 135 before he lost to Cambosis he was offered four million dollars to fight Devin Haney and that was just the first offer he actually could have made more than four million dollars he turned it down and he ended up fighting George Cambosis for 1.5 million now, after Teofimo was already guaranteed an upfront $4 million to fight Devin Haney, he then ran into Eddie Hearn, and then they demanded $10 million to fight Haney. I'll fight all, all you guys. What are you going to do? We're taking the world and everything what in What are we going to do? I'm going to fight Cambosis. I'll fight all, you, all you guys. That's what right I'll, I'll take on Give us $10 million. We fight Devin Haney yeah, you tomorrow. Yeah, you huh? uh, give us $10 million. <laughs> we fight Devin tomorrow. Devin. How much? Uh, $10 million. Now, mind you guys, right after they demanded that $10 million, they end up fighting George Cambosis for $1.5. Then more recently, Teofimo Lopez came out and said that he wanted $20 million to fight against Devin Haney. And there's a very good chance he's not making more than $2 million to fight against Jermaine Ortiz. Teo would have made triple that if he would have fought Devin Haney next instead of Ortiz. So if Teo is asking for $20 million to fight Devin Haney, how much do you guys think he's going to ask to fight Terrence Crawford? Teo has no interest in fighting Terrence Crawford, just like he has no interest in fighting Devin Haney. This is a man who couldn't even outbox George Cambosis. He struggled against Sandar Martin. He would get dominated by Devin Haney, and he would get knocked out by Terrence Crawford. When Teo makes excuses for why he lost to George Cambosis, if Teo was a special fighter, he would have been able to beat George Cambosis even on his worst day. If Teo truly had confidence and he felt that he had lost to George Cambosis because that wasn't him, he would have came back immediately and completely dominated George Cambosis in a rematch to show people what he can do when he's 100%. But he didn't do that because he knew the risk of losing to this man back to back. With all of that being said, Eddie Hearn, he came out and he exposed how Teofimo Lopez is constantly pricing himself out with ridiculous numbers to take on tough challenges. So I'm gonna play this clip for you guys. This was Eddie Hearn talking about what's possibly next for Devin Haney if he beats Regis Progre in impressive mm. fashion. I just feel like the winner of this is going to emerge as a superstar. I think it's a 50-50 fight. Regis looks so fired up up there, but he's got the bit between his teeth. I think he's the guy with a chip on his shoulder who thinks, this is my time. You know, I deserve this now. I deserve this opportunity. And, um, you know, I can't wait. I, I think the winner, for me, if we don't make Ryan Garcia against the winner of this fight, Dazona, you know, that's what Dazona going to want. Two guys on the same platform. You've also got Jack Catterall. You've got the winner of Liam Paro against Montana Love. You've got Richardson Hitchens. You've got all these guys. But the winner of this fight is going to want the biggest fight in boxing. Okay, so in that clip right there, you guys heard Eddie Hearn. They said the priority is to make Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. That's the fight that Dazone wants. And then he mentioned every other name at 140 except for Teofimo Lopez's name. This is when the reporter said to him, well, it would seem to make sense to make either a Ryan Garcia fight or Teo fight. Then this is when Eddie Hearn says this. That's, yeah. Well, at 140, you would think Ryan or Teo, given, you know, the belts. Yeah, but, but at you 35, you got Tank, but... Yeah, but... You know, you've got to be realistic as well. It's so difficult trying to do deals with some people because they just... You know, I'm having it at the moment in another fight where someone pulls a number out and you're like, 
ha like let me show you the budget to the fight right mm. and and you can see how it all works yeah. and then you can comment on that mm. oh i'm not interested in the budget it's like why because that's my number he's like but how like do you want the promoter to lose three or four million dollars by paying you that number yeah it's like do you know what i'm saying like mm. So it's really difficult sometimes to have those conversations with fighters. And that's why I like to open the books up sometimes and just say, try and understand the business. Mm. And when you get it right, like tomorrow, you see Devin and you see Regis make a lot of money. And, but that's because of the success of the show. And before that, Devin, Devin historically, is a guy that does four, five, six thousand. He's done his work, he's built his profile, and now he's made it. The problem is with Tiafimo, yeah. and I, I, like, I think he's brilliant for the sport it goes back to what i said to you earlier yeah, the, uh, the figures yeah but you see it's actually easier to make a mega fight with those guys than just a standard fight mm -hmm. see i reckon don't forget tfimo was supposed to fight tomorrow night heisman night right oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah so that conversation would have probably gone something like aram going i'll give you two million dollars you do an aram impression hey tfimo <laughs> listen you're gonna fight a bum you're gonna defend the title I'm going to give you two million dollars. We're going to do the fight at the theater. And Tiafimo said, two million dollars? Are you joking? And Aaron went, listen, you fought Cambosis for the Undisputed Championship. You only just sold out the theater. You fought Josh Taylor in a big fight at 140. We couldn't sell out the f***ing theater. And now you want 10 million for epoxy defense of the title? Two millions, massive money. And it, Bob's right. And Tiafimo would have gone, I'm not fighting for two million. Mm. But then you sit on the bench and then you don't fight till what? March, April. Yeah. But so sometimes it's easier to make the bigger fights where there is the money in the pot. Mm. Like Tiafimo against Ryan or Tiafimo against Devin or Regis. That is a big fight. So, so far we've heard reports that Tiafimo, he turned down a Ryan Garcia fight. We know he turned down the Devin Haney fight. And if he's asking for 10 or $20 million to fight Devin Haney, how much do you guys think he was asking for to even fight Javante Tank Davis? Those are what you call leave me alone figures. I'll give them a ridiculous number so they'll just leave me alone. And then go fight safer opponents for the smallest figures. But then sometimes no safe opponents end up beating you. Just ask T.O. Fimo. Like I said, not only did he lose to George Cambosis, but he almost lost to Sandor Martin. Now, this is not to suggest that T.O. will never get in the ring with one of these top guys. I'm sure he will eventually. But for his sake, he better hope he gets in the ring with one of them before he loses to another safe opponent for a small payday. Something else I want to point out before I end this video. You know, all this time, Tio Fimo has been talking about fighting Terrence Crawford. As soon as Terrence Crawford responds to Tio Fimo Lopez, one of the first things he says to Crawford is, but yeah, you got to get out of that Al Heyman contract. When Terrence Crawford is not even signed to Al Heyman, he's not signed to PBC. So it's like T.O. Fimo is already trying to make excuses for why the fight can't happen. Instead of just saying to Crawford, let's make the fight happen. Or even contacting Terrence Crawford or his people to really show that you really want to make the fight. After all, this is what he did when he wanted to fight George Cambosis. When T.O. Fimo chose to fight George Cambosis, he was going against what Top Rank wanted. He was going against what the fans wanted. And he was in contact with Cambosis people to make that fight happen. And he wasn't fighting Cambosis because it was his mandatory, because he was already given permission to make another voluntary defense by the sanctioning body. So until we see Tio Fimo showing the same type of urgency that he showed to make the Cambosis fight, you cannot take him serious when it comes to a Terrence Crawford fight. With that being said, I'm gonna wrap this video up. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. Let me tell you guys about Issa Israel Law Firm. It is a full-service legal practice based in Denver, Colorado, an emerging hub for combat sports and high-altitude training. If you're a fighter inside or outside of the ring and you need a law firm you can trust to fight for you, visit thefighterfirm.com or email help at iilawfirm.com. Legal representation is usually limited to plaintiffs or defendants in Colorado, but iFirm can help anyone in the world with trademarking their business name, logos, and U.S. immigration issues. This brother has been my attorney for a while and helped guide me through all kinds of business and civil issues, so make sure you guys go to thefighterfirm.com.
All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, the fever blisters, diabetic ulcers, this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Key Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top-ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling, inflammation, and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to lodekey.com. Like them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram.